This is part two of a three-part series on Animation Player in Godot. Part one, I talked about properties and two different ways to animate sprites in 2D, and a couple general tips and tricks for animating that make your life a lot easier. In this video, I talk about audio animation tracks and Bezier animation tracks, so enjoy. That's all this one needs to be. I'm sure that that's all I have. Ah, let's see, I had another thing here. So let's talk about another type of track. Because we don't just we don't just play the animation. We have this little glass sound effect. So this is a I'll show you how to put that in. You have to add a audio playback track. And when you do an audio playback track, you have to pick a stream player, audio stream player, and you can create those by you know add child node, right click and do, or you can do Control A, and then audio stream player. And for this case, I just want a generic one. You don't need the, the 2D and 3D put audio in a location. So like when you're, it's, you can, it can sound with the stereo. If, they, if the player has stereo, it'll start on the left speaker and then it'll move to the right speaker if you walk past the position where the stream player is. But I don't care about that. I'm just going to do a generic one. Um, so what you set, the stream as usually you can you can set a stream and then you can hit play when you're using the animation player to play an audio from a from a stream track it doesn't matter what you do here you add the stream in the animation track itself so you can do different streams very easily uh, so i'm going to right click and uh, actually you know what okay there's two ways you can right click and insert key or you can just go up to the sfx and grab glass shatter and drag it in there it is. Do I do that right? No, it shatters right there. Drag it around. Nice. And that's how you do it. I told you I'm going to talk about every single type of track, right? So here we go. This is one that is kind of mysterious, right? It's a complicated word. Bezier. It's like Bezier, right? French. And I have another type of property track that's also one uh, so let's talk let's talk about this this first the uh, uh should we talk about first let's talk about the bezier first so this is something you could do with a position see i'm i'm modifying the position here bezier works the same way as with a regular property track, but it gives you an option to put your own curve on how the property is changing. So with position, you can use continuous update mode. That means that it's going to take value, whatever this position is, and increment. Instead of, instead of just popping it to that place, it will slowly move it towards. So let's let's talk about update mode first. I'm sorry, I'm jumping back. This is good. So when I have continuous, Val moves from there to there slowly. Let's say I want her to pop right over. She's gonna stay here at this position and she'll move once this once she hits this key. So she's just walking in place and then bam. So that's the difference between update modes. Okay. Simple, right? That's not too bad. Um okay so if you use continuous, it slowly goes from one value to another. Bezier curve works the same way, but it gives you more control over the rate of the change. So and the way you do this, you can go add track Bezier, but you might also have seen this happening when I hit over here. This gives you an option to make the property that you clicked on create the track as a regular value position track or create it as a Bezier track. When you hit Bezier, it makes the same type of thing, right, as, as what I have there. Another thing to know is that when you insert a Bezier for a vector that has two values, like position, like, uh, I wonder what happens with... Like, Oh, you can't do it for rectangles. There's there's some things you can't do it for. I think a rectangle is a is a 
object that's more complicated. A rectangle has two different um, vectors in it. It has the position vector and the size vector. But some other topics. A lot of a lot of topics. Okay. So this also means that you can divide. You can divide x and y in a way that you can't do with a regular property track. So if I only want to change my x value, I can make these and I can just I can just have a thing to change y. I mean, it doesn't really matter because these these keys like can just not change the y value, but I don't know. Something to, something to think about. It's nice because you can change the rate of the value at different rates. So you can have it like going zoom in on the x-axis and slowly changing. Um, so that's cool. Okay, so what do we do? Back to the real thing. So these Bezier curves. So what happens is after, after she says, have at you, a laser comes down and she's gonna teleport away. And in the real game, she would teleport back and then the fight would start. Go that far. So, For this, I wanted it to, to instead of just going down, it's going to go boom. <laughs> if that makes sense. Is that a good way to describe it? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it makes the most sense to me. So the way you do that, let's do it from the start. So now I've, I've gotten rid of that Bezier, so it's not, it's not happening anymore. Just like with the value position, you can also, okay, when you're in the Bezier menu, you can hit this X to go back to the regular menu. You can still do that record thing. So I have my laser here. I have location. I can still drag it. I can still hold shift just like I did before, and I can drag it down to the place I want it. And bam, it creates the, the next Bezier key. So then I'll go click on this, uh, little curve icon and it has automatically created my key here for me at that value and it puts a curve so this curve here is a mathematical function that tells it what rate to change the position value at the y the y location and the way you can define that curve is with these handles the in it's called an in handle and an out handle so the left one is the in handle and the right one is the out handle uh, this is the last position on the track, so the out handle doesn't do anything. But in this case, the in handle is the one we care about. So we want it to start off slow and then zoom down at the end. So we hit this and we can see, boom. That's how you do it. Simple. <laughs> Looks scary, but simple, right? So it's nice. Instead of doing like, instead of having to pick your little curve thing you can just use a track like this and then it gives you a lot of really fine control over how things are moving or anything you can do anything it doesn't have to be position you can change color at a certain rate you can change the acceleration speed you know like whatever properties you want so that is busy a and that's it not not super not super complicated right and okay then I also have it, the, the little laser becomes more opaque so that it looks less weird when she shrinks into the tube. <laughs> um, and that is by using this, this, and I have a color rectangle and I'm keying the color. You just key the color. You can key anything. So I key the color. I key it at white or whatever here at a fairly transparent alpha value down here. And then when I go, like if I, okay, let's, let's start off, show you how it's done step by step. So we have this, but you know, this doesn't look as cool. Like it comes down and that's fine, but I want it to, I want it to like it really emphasize it, right? So I want to put in a key here that keeps it transparent until it gets down to where she is. So this is a place where it's going to be like this. These two keys are going to be the same, and then it's going to change here. If I just if I just put this here and I keyed it like that and made it totally white, it's going to start changing way back here. 
and I don't really want it to. It's going to be like already, oh wait. Okay. I want this to be alpha beginning. No. I want it to be really, really opaque over here, but not, not totally opaque, just really opaque. So if I just did it like this, it starts changing well before I want it to change, right? So instead, I'm going to double this key. I'm going to make it stay at this exact alpha value by clicking on this key, selecting that key, putting the playhead where I want it. I want it to stay at that value until the place, and then I hit duplicate. And now it stays at the same color, and then it starts changing after I specifically tell it I want it to change. And that goes, yep. And then, after it's down, I am going to make her smash into a little tube. And, and just, just like with the color, like I was telling you, I don't want her to smash into a tube until the laser's all the way down. So I put in the key here to keep the scale at 1, 1. And then I go down here, and the scale is still 1, 1. And then at this point, I start over from the beginning. Set her scale back to, to 1. Put in the, I put in the key so she scales 1, 1. And I do want to create the reset track here, because wh whenever I reset, I want her to be at the correct scale. Right? Uh, so the laser comes down. And then here, I still want her to be at 1, 1. Remember, if I put it here, she would start shrinking as soon as I start the animation. So I want her to stay at, one, at regular scale. And then I want her to shrink down. So remember the key commands, S to start scale. And then I can just grab this little X, squeeze her down. Oh, and I forgot something. Instead of having to hit key, we can just hit the scale mask and make sure record is on. We can shrink her. Oop. If you hold shift, I forgot that I shouldn't be holding shift. If you hold shift, it'll scale. Um, oh, uh, it'll lock the, what do you call it, ratio. Um, it'll scale both X and Y relative to each other, so it'll just shrink and it won't, like, smash, you know. But I do want to smash her into a tube. <laughs> that sounds bad. She's smashing herself into a tube on purpose because she's magic. Because she's Dracula on Halloween. Um, and then it automatically puts the key in there, just like with uh, position. So now we got... And I also have a Bezier curve on AK because... Um, same thing, I want her to zoom up. You'll also notice I'm not changing the Bezier on on the, the laser box after I get it down here. And that's just because any child of a thing that you're changing is going to go with it. So this thing's position is relative to AK's position. So I've bezier that position down here. But now, since it's a child and she's going to be moving, I don't have to key that anymore. I can just key AK up with the same bit with it, her own bezier. And the laser will go with her. So that's a little convenient way. And that's this whole one. I think that's about her most complicated one. Uh, have the... These are just loops, or this one isn't even a loop. This is the same as the, you know, we set the region, we set the number of frames, and we do the, do the, do the animation. She just stands up, and throwing the glass is the same, but it has the audio, so it's pretty simple. Future me here. I shot this all at once, but it's way too long, so you're going to have to watch the next one. Sorry, Charlie. So click on it. Click on it. Put it up there. Click on it.